chapter 4 and John chapter 4 and notice what the Lord says to this woman that he's talking to at the well and notice what he says there in verse 21 John 4 21 Jesus saith unto her woman believe me the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the father Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Now he's a Jew, the Lord is. Now watch what he says. But the hour cometh, and now is, when true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And I want you to underline that spirit and in truth. Now look while you're there in John, turn over to John chapter 17. John chapter 17, and I want you to see what the truth is. In John chapter 17, notice what he says in verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Well then, if I must worship the Father, worship God in spirit and in truth, I can't worship the Lord apart from this Bible. I can't worship the Lord without worshiping Him from the knowledge I gain from the Scriptures. And I must rightly divide the Scriptures in order to have the truth that's for me today. Now I've said all along, all the Bible is for me, but it is not all unto me as a member of the body of Christ. And so I not only worship in spirit, but I serve in spirit. Look in Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. And notice what Paul says about Romans chapter 1. He says in verse 9, For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. So Paul not only, we not only worship in the spirit, we serve the Lord in the gospel in the spirit. Now turn with me to Ephesians and look over in Ephesians. Uh, go to Philippians first. <coughs> in Philippians chapter 3. In Philippians chapter 3. <coughs> and notice in verse 3. <coughs> For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit <clears throat> and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. <clears throat> Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Now notice what he says and he lists <clears throat> several things and Y'all just pray for my throat here. <clears> throat> uh, I get so much allergy stuff and there ain't nothing I can do about it. I'm on allergies. I'm taking all kinds of medicine. And, and the only thing, the Holy Spirit can clear it up. He will. It, it'll get cleared. But look what he says in verse 5. Circumcise the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, 
as touching the law of Pharisee. He could boast in that. He could be proud of that. It'd be like I'm, I'm a member of the first so-and-so church somewhere. I'm a deacon here. I'm a deacon there. I, or I'm a, a Sunday school teacher of the largest Sunday school in North Carolina. I could boast in that, brag. That's what he's talking about. He said it's touching the law of Pharisees concerning zeal, persecuting uh, the church. Touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. Paul did what the law said. Paul was going about trying to establish his own righteousness, not submitting to the righteousness of God. And that's what he said about the nation Israel in Romans chapter 10. He said, I bear them record. They have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first. Also to the Greek in Romans 1. The gospel. But look on, he goes on and he go, talks about but what things were gained to me in the eyes of man, what things were gained to me in the popularity of man, in the, and, and the, uh, being celebrated by people and a pat on the back. He said, what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. Now, now the translators of the modern Bible will never give you the modern word for that word. I do count them but dung. You know what that is. And so all of his goodness, in verse 9, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His suffering being made conformable unto His death. And He's in harmony with His death. And I want you to understand all of that was nothing to Paul. That's not what he could glory in. He told the Galatians, he said, God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul was about preaching the gospel of Christ. He said it's the power of God unto salvation. Not joining a church, not being baptized, not uh, being the works of the flesh, not keeping the law. That's not the power of God unto salvation. What's the power of God unto salvation? Christ went to the cross and died for all your sins. He paid the debt that you owed to God that you can't pay and He took it all away and God Almighty forgave it in order to justify you if you will believe. And that word justified is declare you righteous. I mean he declares it. He's the judge. But look what he says. We worship God in the Spirit and truth. Look in Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. In Ephesians chapter 4, notice in verse 20. But ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that ye have heard Him, and have been taught by Him, as the truth is in Jesus. Now folks, that's where truth sat. Jesus Christ was the Word. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory. John chapter 1. Now there's only one way to worship the Lord Jesus, uh, God the Father. 
and that is the worship through His Son, Jesus Christ. He is truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, the life. Thy word is truth. He said, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. And that word became flesh and was born of a virgin and lived a perfect sinless life to go to a cross and be your substitute. And God imputed to him your sins that he didn't deserve. He never deserved to die. He lived a sinless life. And so he's not dying for his sins. He's dying for our sins. And he's paying for our disobedience. He's paying for our wrongdoing. And God imputed it to him. And those that will believe on him, God will impute his righteousness into your account. It's like a big ledger up here. It's like you got on one side, you're a son of Adam. You're in condemnation, you're in death. And Jesus, on the other side of the ledger, that's all you owe. You got all of these sins, all of these things that you need to, you got to pay God back. He's a just God. He's a righteous God. And you one day, you will face Him. And there, all of this over here, is all against you. The laws against you. That the world may become guilty before God. And so he gives the law. By the law is the knowledge of sin. The law shows you you're a sinner. The law shows you that it's impossible for you in your flesh to please God. God is not worried. God is not wanting some outward showing or some fleshly deed to show forth in Anyway, we show forth the grace of God through the words that come out of our mouth. We preach the gospel of Christ by the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. It's through preaching that God manifests His Word. It's through preaching and teaching of the Word that we're edified and built up. Not some outward ceremony to show forth nothing, but to exalt the flesh is all that does. And I don't care what anybody says about it. It don't matter. I care about what this Bible says about it. And that's what's important. We worship God in spirit. And we worship God in truth. And that truth is in Jesus Christ and what He accomplished in our behalf. And it's like Robbie said, God didn't see something in you. He had a purpose. He had a, a will. And that will was, he's going to bring everything in his creation under the headship of the Lord Jesus Christ, his only begotten son. And God has heaven and earth, and he's going to reconcile all of it together under the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the head of the body. And you can't change that. And he's what he's doing. But we worship God in truth and spirit. We serve him. Well, look back in Ephesians there. He talked about this there. But look in chapter, notice in chapter 3. In chapter 3, and notice what he says there in verse 16 that He would grant you according to the riches of His glory to be strengthened with might, power, by His Spirit in the, where? Inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love. Then Christ God wants Christ to be magnified in our hearts. How can he have that be? By the Word of God. In fact, look over in Colossians chapter 3 
And notice in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 10. Colossians 3, 10. Uh, you notice what he says there? He says in verse 9, Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Now folks, the new man is in you, the inner man. It's a new creation. But you're inside of a new creation. And that new creation is the body of Christ. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. In Christ Jesus, you're the new creature. And you're to be renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created that inward man. And that's where the strength and the power and the might comes from. It does not come from fleshly deeds. It comes by the Word of God. It comes by the Spirit of God that you have. Look back in chapter 1. In chapter 1, notice what he says in verse 13. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Uh, and notice he said, in whom? Also, after that ye believed. Now, ain't that something? What was the key? Believing. Do you believe? Do you believe the gospel of your salvation? That's all you've got to trust in. And he said, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance under the redemption of the purchased possession to, unto the praise of His glory. God did all that He did, and it's for His glory. It's for His praise. And we, the body of Christ, will show forth the praise of His grace throughout eternity when we reign with Christ out there. And folks, yet people that are in the body, so many of them, have, they do not have a clue what they're going to be doing in eternity. They don't have no clue of what Christ accomplished for them at the cross. And they don't have a clue what their God is doing today in the dispensation of grace. And that's a shame. Somebody has let down the job. Christendom today is so interested in building their names and everything and big churches and all of this and having a big following that they don't, they don't care about the people there. All they want to do is control and get their money and build more and more to make a name for themselves. And we're in a mess. And then somebody comes along and preaches the truth and they say, oh, you're confusing me. No, you're confused. I'm just trying to straighten you out. People today, but look on. Notice in chapter, uh, there in Ephesians, turn over to chapter 4 again. And look in chapter 4, he said the truth in verse 21 is in Jesus, verse 22, that you put off concerning the form of conversation, manner of life, uh, the old man, the old nature, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So it's the spirit of your mind. Where's your heart at? He's not talking about that heart, that organ that's pumping the blood. 
It's up here, folks. Look in Philippians. Philippians chapter 2. And notice what he says. Verse 5. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. But made himself of no reputation took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Even the death of the cross. Crosses was made for sinners. Cursed, look what in uh, Galatians chapter 3, Paul says there. In verse 10, For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. People that are trying to keep the law for righteousness are under a curse. Look what he said, Cursed is everyone that continues not. In all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith. But the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. He was cursed by God. Do you all understand that? And the law. And he kept the law. But you don't. And you can't. And for God to be able to declare you righteous, your law-breaking spirit had to be paid for, and you can't pay for it yourself if he's an eternal God. The only way you would be able to pay that by is for all eternity in the lake of fire, in death and hell. People don't understand that. People's got the idea. That if I have enough good works and I do good, God's going to accept me and I'm going into heaven. And so if my good works outweigh my bad works, everything's going to be fine. No, it's not. You are bust hell wide open and God in your calamity will laugh at you. People say, well, I don't want to serve a God like that. You don't have a choice. He said, I am the Lord and there is no other. There is nobody. Jesus Christ hath immortality. He only has immortality. He's the only one that has life everlasting. And your eternal life is in Him. And the only way you get into Him is by believing what He did for you on the cross. And religion. I mean religion just muddles everything up. And religion adds to the cross or takes away the cross. They add that you got to do something. If you don't do something in your flesh, you're not worshiping God. If you don't do something in your flesh, you're not pleasing God in spite of the fact that God said that they that are in the flesh are enemies. You cannot please God in your flesh. Quit trying to please God in your flesh. Say, well, what am I to do? Count it to be dead indeed. You're alive unto God. Look in Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. We worship through 
Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. Romans chapter 6. What shall we say then? Verse 1. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? For you got saved, for you trusted Christ, your old nature was dominant. The old man that you got from Adam, your old nature, he dominated your life. All you thought about was what would please the flesh. He was control of you. He had control of you. He had dominion over you. And you didn't even realize it. And you were dead and didn't know it. And some of you might still be in that condition because you will not submit unto the righteousness of God by realizing you don't have no righteousness. And what will you answer the Lord when He rises up? But look what he goes on. He said, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin, that S-I-N is the old man, live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ, and that's done by the Spirit of God, is not done by no per man. No man can put you into Jesus Christ through a water ceremony. We're baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. So we already died. We died when he died. We were crucified when he was crucified. God Almighty poured out everything that He could condemn us for, imputed it to Christ, and Jesus Christ died for all of those sins that the old nature can produce. But knowing this, come down to verse 5. Knowing this, that our old man, that's the S-I-N in the chapter, Our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed that henceforth we should not serve sin, the old man. For he that is dead is free from sin, the old man. We died with Christ. We're free. There is no now, no condemnation. I'm not a son of Adam now. I'm a son of God. Don't you understand? I have all the rights and privileges. I have everything that Jesus Christ has. God has put it to my account. And now I am a son of of God boy that's pretty rich isn't it verse come down to verse 10 for in that he died he died unto sin once but in that he liveth he liveth unto God likewise just like him Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Now watch verse 13. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, the old man. But yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Now what's he saying? Folks, I'm the, I realize I'm dead. I died. I, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in this flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I was crucified, I was buried, and I was resurrected, and I'm alive unto God today and not unto myself. I don't live unto myself, I live unto the Lord. That's why I do what I do. That's why you do what you do. 
So who's the king in your life? Who do you worship? Do you worship the Lord? You do it in the spirit of your mind. Your mind is renewed. Look what he goes on. is written. And I, I, there's no, well, I'll go back to Ephesians. I'll tell you what, turn over to 2 Corinthians. And look in 2 Corinthians. Look where Satan attacked Eve at. Look in chapter 11, verse 3. You don't go to church to worship. I mean, we worship it in here. We worship the Lord in the now. But this is not, we don't worship. You worship Him every day you live. You worship Him in your mind and your spirit. Through the Word of God, through the knowledge that you have of what Christ accomplished for you. And folks, you're free. You're, there is no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Walking after the flesh is trying to gain what you have in Christ by keeping the law. And the flesh is weak in that it can't keep the law. You don't have no power. And I guarantee you before the week's over, you will break at least one commandment. Somewhere. You'll go down the road and covet something. Oh, I'd like to have that. Oh, I want one. I don't want that one. I want one like it. That's how they get around it. No, you covet it. We all do it. You'll add a little something to juice up the story a little bit. That's bearing false witness. We do it. My mama used to say, well, every story needs a little juice to it. And she knew how to juice it up. You could get a little blood off of a briar scratch and she'd be telling the story that you got a gash in your finger. They gashed their finger. Just stuff like that. And I'd say, Mama, I ain't no gash. <laughs> oh, every story's got to have a little juice to it. That's better than false witness. That's not telling the truth. We're all guilty of it. I guarantee you, if you be honest, it's easier for you, it, it's a temptation to tell a lie to get out of a jam than to tell the truth and get in trouble. You ever been in that situation? We all have. All I want you to see is, folks, that law was not for the righteous man. Paul said in 1 Timothy the law was given for sinners, for liars. The law was given so that they'd see that they were sinners. The law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. God never meant for you to try to keep the law. But we're dead to the law. And the law was took out of the way. The thing that can condemn us has already condemned us in Christ. Don't you understand? It was the law that demanded his death. Not that he was a criminal. He had no sin. He's got your sins put to his count. And there he's dying for them. And you believe on him. You're saved. That's all God requires is belief. Isn't that, isn't that an amazing thing? He doesn't require you to jump through a hoop. He doesn't require you to do anything but believe the message of grace, the gospel of Christ. 
And you know where, how we're worshiping God today? In our spirits, in our minds. Christ is being crucified in your thoughts, in the message. We glory in the cross. We worship God having the knowledge of what His Son has did for us. We exalt the Lord Jesus Christ through words. We magnify Christ through our bodies by words. Paul said, I believe and therefore I speak. I testify to the fact of what He's done. His grace. But look in a and I'm going to close here. But look in chapter 11 verse 3. He said, But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. So your what? Mind should be corrupted through the simplicity that is in Christ. Look over in chapter 10. In chapter 10, 2 Corinthians 10, 3, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down what? Where is imaginations at today? It's in your mind. How do a lot of people worship God? Through the imaginations of their heart. Not through the Word of God. Not through the mirror of the Lord. Not through the Word that presents Christ. But through their own heart. Matter of fact, turn to Jeremiah and look in Jeremiah chapter 3. Jeremiah chapter 3. Jeremiah 3.17 At that time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord and all nations shall be gathered unto it to the name of the Lord to Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk any more after the imaginations of their evil heart. Look in chapter 7. In chapter 7 notice verse 24. But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsel and the imaginations of their evil heart and went backward and not forward. Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt unto this day, I have even sent unto you all my servants the prophet, daily rising up early and sending them. They were preaching the word, but they wasn't following the word. They were going after Balaam. They were going after idols. And they were out of the imaginations of their heart worshiping the queen of heaven. Notice in chapter 9, chapter 9, in verse 14, Jeremiah 9, 14, but have walked after the imaginations of their own heart and after Balaam, which their fathers taught them. Therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I will feed them even this people with wormwood and give them water of gall to drink. And that's going to happen. It's in Revelation chapter 9, chapter 16. One of these days, God's going to, this idolatrous world, God is going to send His wrath upon them. Why? Men today follow and worship God out of the imaginations of their evil heart. You want to see your heart? Look in us. Let's read. Look in chapter eleven. In chapter eleven, verse eight. Yet they obeyed not, nor inclined their ear, but walked every one in the imagination of their evil heart. 
Therefore I will bring upon them all the words of this covenant, which I commanded them to do, but they did them not. Look in chapter 13. In chapter 13, notice in verse 10, this evil people which refuse to hear my words, just like they do today. They don't want to hear the word of God rightly divided. They don't want to hear who their apostle is. They don't want to hear what God's doing today. They want to hear some story. They want to hear some fable. They want to hear some garbage that does not edify them. It subverts them and turns them upside down. But it makes them feel good, and that's all they care about. People don't go to church anymore to learn the Word of God and to study the Word of God and to be built up in the faith, have a knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Most of the time they go to have a social gathering. They go to feel good, to ease their gold dead conscience and they are worshiping God out of the imaginations of their heart. So I don't like it. I don't care. God Almighty called me to preach and I tell you, I, when I stand before the Lord, I'll be able to say I never held back anything. Now look what he goes on to say. This evil people refuse to hear my words which walk in the imagination of their evil heart and walk after other gods, idolatry and doctrines to serve them and to worship them shall even be as this girl, which is good for nothing. That's what he thinks about religion. It's good for nothing. Look in chapter 16. In chapter 16. And notice in where he said, verse 12. In 16, verse 12, And ye have done worse than your fathers. For behold, ye walk every one after the imagination of his evil heart that they may not hearken unto me. He goes on to say, turn over to 17, in chapter 17. Now here it tells you what the heart is. Verse 9, he said, The Lord of the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. You see, you can fool me, you can hide from me, but God Almighty knows what's in your heart. He knows why you're here. He knows your love for the Word. He knows how much you love Him. He knows whether you appreciate what He's done for you or not. He knows your heart. Your heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. And who can know it? Man can't. Look in chapter 18. In chapter 18, verse 12. They said, they said, uh, and they said, there is no hope, but we will walk after our own devices, our own religion, and we will, everyone, do the imagination of his evil heart over and over. Do you know the problem with Israel was they were not circumcised in heart. And ears. They had eyes to see but saw not. They had ears to hear but they heard not. Their heart was not circumcised. Their heart wasn't in it. Their heart didn't love the Lord. They loved Him with their mouth. But their heart was far from them. Just like today. Where's your heart at? Your heart out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth speaketh. What's in your heart is what you want to talk about. What's in your heart is what you want to do. There are people today you might be sitting here. And your heart is not here. Your heart is not wanting to hear the word of God. Your heart is wanting to be somewhere else. Your heart is wanting to be doing something else. And God knows it. I don't know it. But he does. Your heart. 
You worship the Lord through your mind, spirit, your heart. Through His Word. The Holy Spirit takes His Word and guides your life. He corrects you. That's the chastening. People say, does the Lord chast? Sure He does. He corrected me a long time ago. I was going the wrong way and He turned me around by His Word. He corrects us through His Word. He corrects us by letting us see the truth and hearing the truth. I hope your heart's in the right place. Paul said, having these promises in 1 Corinthians, I won't, won't turn there and read it, but having these promises in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 7, the last verse, he says, come out in chapter 6, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And I'll be a God unto you and you be my sons and daughters. Paul says in verse 1 of chapter 7, having these promises, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh. And what's that next word? Anybody that got it? Flesh and spirit. The heart. God's doctrine rightly divided. His word is the only thing that can cleanse your heart from the filthiness of religion. All right, I hope you got something out of it.